This is Twit. Promise me that you're going to turn off those badge notifications. No, I like them. Really? I'll tell you why. Okay. Did, I do something else that you probably hate. I have folders on my front yeah, page. Yeah, I don't like that either. Because I found, I, I just, like I said, I have more than 150 apps on here, but I found that I really, there is about, there's a ton of them I use all the time. Mm -hmm. So, the and, the, and you're going to really hate this. The number one and number two app aren't on my first page. What? They're hidden back on page three. I only have three pages. Why? Because this is, the last page is my kind of tools page. Ah. And, uh, I also put them back here because I have this kind of crazy notion. Well, it'll make it a little bit more secure if so, people don't see the right up front when I turn on my phone that I have LastPass and Authy running. These are kind of, to me, must-have apps on every device. LastPass is my password vault. And we've talked about this before, mm -hmm. and you can have many oh. of them. I love how it works with Face ID yeah, now. Me too. Isn't that great? Uh, except in the middle of the night when you're trying to log into a site and, it, and your face is all squenched up and it doesn't recognize you. But this simplifies my login considerably and I generate all my passwords with LastPass. Uh, that way I don't use the same password over and over again and I don't uh, have easy to memorize passwords. I have hard to memorize passwords because LastPass keeps track of all of those. Uh, we should mention they're going to be a sponsor. Oh. Uh, they've, we've signed a deal with them. I'm thrilled about that. Oh, great. Yeah. I um, I use them too, but I don't I don't use the app that often, like the app itself. <clears throat> well, I'll tell you why. Uh, it, uh, on the uh, You're right. On, on Android, I don't. But on iPhone, it doesn't do automatic fill-in as mm -hmm. it does on Android. So I have to, if I'm logging into a site or an app, and by the way, this works for apps, but you still have to go back to LastPass, copy it. It's a lot easier now than it used to be because of the... Uh, the iPhone swipe, mm -hmm. you can you can be in an app for login and then swipe back to LastPass, which is really handy. But doesn't it usually bring up LastPass for you? Like no. you don't have to go to the app? Oh, yeah. Oh well, Maybe I find I have to. Yeah. The other thing I use all the time is Authy, and we've talked about two-factor. You should always have two-factor on everything you do. Authy is uh, the way I do that. And you can see these are all the accounts I have two-factor on, quite a few and two-factor means in, in addition to a password, I'll have to give a six-digit token code. And that has to come from this app. So those two apps are my kind of secure my stuff apps. They're so important, I'm putting them top of the list. And, and I do use those every day. Let me go back to my front page, though. Here's one of the reasons I want a badge on there. Only Apple's calendar can have a date badge. Apple, you know, date and time... <clears throat> can only be displayed by the Apple apps. They're the only apps that allow that. So your clock app shows the time. And if you had the Apple calendar, it'd show the date. So the way other apps get around, a lot of calendar apps get around that is with the badge. So that's this is the 27th. That's why I, I have a badge that says 27. It doesn't mean I have 27 appointments. This is the calendar app I use. It's called Fantastical. I use it on the desktop and on uh, uh, all my dev all iOS devices for a few reasons. Uh, I like the I like the calendaring. I like the way it works. You see, there's a by month. Uh, here's by week. It also gives me an agenda. But the best thing about this is it's really easy to enter stuff because you don't have to fill in fields. Lunch with Megan, twelve o'clock slash personal at Della Fattoria. Oh, nice. And so what it does is it interprets. Oops, it's still interpreting. So I should probably stop. It's, it interprets what I said and turns it into 12 o'clock. Uh, it didn't get the, uh, it did get the location at Della Fattoria. I, I might have to actually fill in yeah, the address, but it did get the location. Slash personal supposedly puts it in my personal. It did. So you see it has artificial, what do you call that? Natural language. Mm -hmm. It understands English. And so I don't want to have lunch with you, so I'm going to discard that event. <laughs> okay. So it makes it very easy. And there's another reason I do that, and that's another app that I use, which I'm going to show you in a second. Um, so that's fantastic, Cal. It's not free from the, uh, I think it's the Icon Factory, but it's really a great calendar app, and I use it uh, on, on everything. And, and one of the, yeah, there it is, uh, Flexibits, that's who does it, $5.00. And then I think it's a little more expensive for the desktop, but it also gives you great notifications. I have it in my notifications uh, drawer. You know, you have that, uh, the drawer of, um, what do you call that? Shortcuts or something? I don't know. So there it is. Fantastic. How? Oh, this is another way to judge, widget. by the way, how important your apps are. If you right. give them space. Widgets. If you give them widgets. And I do indeed 
give Fantastic Hell widgets. I also give Drafts Pride of Place. I talked about Drafts before. This is the weirdest program on the list. But Drafts is really handy, especially if you're an Apple Watch user. Uh, it works on all iOS, so it's iPad, Watch, and, uh, and iPhone. I use it on my watch. I have a, a Drafts complication. You see it right here. Don't forget to bring in cheese and crackers for our cocktail party tonight. With Megan. With Megan. <laughs> she, she, it actually saw that. I'm going to say done. Now, that didn't process it. <clears throat> it just put it in a trusted inbox. And the inbox shows up uh, in drafts here and here. And then later, I can, by the way, and I can add stuff by typing as well. It's a, The idea is you do the text entry quick and easy, and it all ends up in your inbox okay and then if i call this back up i can process it by sliding over here and sending it to my to-do list my shopping i have a whole bunch of things twitter google plus wordpress a whole bunch of places i can send it so in this case i send it to fantastical mm. and it will fantastical will process it do you see that mm -hmm. And, and make it into an appointment. So it's a very quick way, for instance, to add appointments. You add them on your watch. You don't actually then pull up the calendar app. You just trust that it's in an inbox. And once a day, you go into drafts and you process it. Oh, I got to get the Tech Guy Labs cert. Patrick's, I mean, uh, Russell's been bothering me. So I'm going to put that in my reminder app. Done. It's in my reminder app. By the way, reminders is one of the Apple apps I, I didn't include on this list because it comes with Apple, but it is, you see, a top row app because that's my to-do list. That's everything. And, and, and uh, um, it really is important to for me. I have a number of different uh, categories. I have shopping to do, family recommendations or what people tell, tell me to read or watch, my suggestions for things I want to read or watch. I'm always doing that. Somebody will say, oh, you got to see the e Homeland. Add Homeland to my read and watch list, and now it's in my inbox, and then tonight I'll process it, and I will. Okay, so, so that's I, drafts. I had drafts on my homepage since you mentioned it. It was yeah. there waiting for me to enter all my important thoughts, and I never used it. Yeah, you have. it's not something, first of all, it's not intuitive. Right. Because you say, well, I already have everything I use has data entry. I mean, that's just normal. So it's one of those things you have to figure out first how you might use it. And then second, you have to get in the habit of using it. What I needed was some way I make commitments. Uh, we all do in our lives mm -hmm. all the time. And a commitment, uh, you want to keep your commitments, right? Obviously, mm -hmm. that makes life better. My problem is I would make commitments and forget. Mm -hmm. I forget I told you I would bring that in. I would forget, you know. And so I needed a system where I would make the commitment. I would record it immediately on my Apple Watch, and then it would be stored in a place that was trustworthy, was safe, that I could later process it and put it in the most appropriate place. You can use it to send texts. You could use it to send emails. But, I mean, you might say, well, yeah, but you could do that with Siri. But the problem with that is you have to think about what app you want to use. You have to launch that proper app or tell Siri the right thing. With drafts, you just dump it out of your mind. It's a getting things done um, uh, mechanism. You just dump it out of your mind into a safe place to be stored, and then I can process it intelligently later in a very fast and efficient way. So you're right. I understand. And I, even when we talked about it, it was one of my app caps about a couple of months ago. It probably was baffling to people. And if you haven't, you have to use it every day to really kind of get. And but once you get in the habit of any time I make a commitment, or I a lot of times. You remember something like, oh, God, I keep forgetting to clean the garage or I have to change that light bulb. You think of it at a completely inopportune moment and then it goes by. And then the times that you could get the, the light bulb to change the light bulb. So you want to put it in drafts. And then I use reminders with its location based pinging as well as a way to say what you know next time you're at the hardware store don't forget to pick up light bulbs, things like that. Right. I use that all the time. And reminders I didn't put in my first page either because... I mostly just use my Apple Watch yeah. or Siri. Remind yeah. me when I get to Target to buy toilet paper. I have it there because it's it's more than a to-do list. It's a, it's a reminder. The other Another app here, and by the way, I didn't include that in my top 10 only because I, I'm not putting Apple apps in there. And I'll show you at the end which Apple apps I have mm -hmm. to have. Last week's AppCap full uh, contact. The uh, You go back and watch the AppCap if you want to know more about it. But it's, to me, better than Apple's contact manager. It pulls my contacts from everywhere. Facebook. 
uh, LinkedIn, of course, Apple's contact list, my Google contact list. It merges duplicates. It adds pictures. It's really fantastic. And I showed you uh, also it scans business cards. And I can get rid of, John has been very kindly, every time somebody gives me a business card, I didn't even know this, I'll throw it on my desk. And John's been collecting them. He gave me, you found the book I saw. He gave me, a, he's been collecting every business card I got. Now I'm going to go through and take pictures of them and add them to my uh, contacts. So full contact is a great solution. That's not free. You pay depending on how many things you want it to do. Uh, but it's a really nice app. So that is on my absolutely on my list. Another uh, pick uh, that I had mentioned uh, as an app cap that's also, I think, you know, my picks are kind of quirky. They come from maybe somebody who's been computing for too long. You know, not part of the digital generation is Devon Think. Devon Think is kind of like an email for stuff you want to keep track of, notes, so forth. So I have, it's it looks like email. Uh, this is the top level. I'll go to research. There's an inbox. There's tags. There's things I want to research. There's, I can paste in there notes. I can type in notes. I can paste in links. Um, I have a to-do list. I have a, travel is probably the one I use the most. So upcoming trips, for instance, I know we're going to go to Japan in uh, April. So I have been putting links in there, weather information, an overview. I put in tickets, uh, PDFs, bookings. I have a diary that shows us day by day what we're going to be doing. And then when I get to these places, this is what we're scheduled to do. I can now edit it and add more. And this becomes a travel diary. So I don't know exactly how to describe Devon Think. Uh, writers might use it to take notes for a project they're working on. It's kind of it's a it's a note taking app, but it's structured a little bit more, perhaps like email. I don't I don't know how to characterize it. I've been looking for a long time for something like this, and I end up using Devon Think. Now, one of the reasons I like this also is it it's a desktop application. That's mostly where you would work on this on your Mac, uh, but then uh, that synchronizes. It saves it to uh, Dropbox encrypted, and it synchronizes, and they have an iOS version for both. Uh, iPad and email. So here's, for instance, we're, we're doing a little, Lisa and I are doing a little daydreaming about where we might want to retire. Mm. And so that's in our retirement group. And I have the different locations we're thinking about. This is years away. Don't get okay. freaked out. Do you need to add a note in there? Wait till my kids get through college? <laughs> Wait till <laughs> Megan's kids get through college. Yeah, my yeah. kids. Yeah. <laughs> Your kids are so, I mean, Michael too. Yeah. Michael too. Yeah, we're not retiring. No, we're not retiring yet. Now, but this is nice because it's very easy to use on the phone. But you can all you'll also get it on your um, on your uh, desktop and on your and they're different apps by the way. You have to pay a little extra. But I I just find this very handy uh, for like here's the uh, overview and I can paste in images and things like that. So I I just find this a very handy way for me. How would you describe that to keep track of stuff I'm working on? I guess is it. It's not like a mind mapper. It's not, no, it's very primitive. I mean, it's re it really is an old school application. It's a hierarchical database that looks a lot like email. So you have folders. There are various levels for of of the desktop application. At the highest level, the Devon Think Pro Office is $149. It has some additional features. That's the one I use. Like uh, you can OCR. PDFs, things mm -hmm. like that. It's really designed for you to, to uh, projects, do projects research, I guess, would be the best thing. It's, a, it's something that not everybody will want. It's kind of old school, but I definitely use it. Now, another thing I use all the time because I have an Android phone, and you're now a little fam more familiar with this, is Hangouts. Uh, Hangouts is Google's messaging app. And the only reason I have it on here is uh, it's the one messaging app I have that works on everything. So it works on Android, it works on Windows, it works on Linux, it works on Mac OS, it works on iOS. So if somebody messages me, you know, I use, I love messages, but it doesn't work across platform, right? So if somebody messages me on my main phone number, it'll show up in Hangouts. So that has to be on my phone because it's, it's one way I can keep track of people. And one of the things I like about it, like Apple's messages, is I can use it on the desktop as well. So Sometimes if I get in long conversations, instead of typing on my phone, which I hate to do, I will go to the desktop and start typing mm. on the screen. Google's Hangouts.
that's unique to me, frankly. I, that's only because I use an Android device. Yeah, uh, I mean, messages will work with people with Android phones, but it's pr a problem when you go back and forth between yeah. Android and iOS, and then you're lost. I use in. I use both, uh, and people who know me, like my family, will sometimes use send a message to both my message, my Apple phone number, and my Google Voice number. That way, it gets to both of them, and then they can't. I'm not. Don't do that. Uh, I already have like ten email addresses over the years. It's hard you. to reach me, and I make it that way on purpose. <laughs> I, I really debated this. This is a sponsor, and I tried to keep sponsors out of this list because I don't I, I, I don't want to I don't know. I but I got I can't live without my Audible, so I had to put it in here. This is an app that I literally launch every single day. These are books that I'm you know I have a lot of books. This is let's show you what's on my device. These are books that I actually have downloaded on my device because sometimes I'm in the mood to listen to a little Zen Allen Watts. Sometimes a little sci-fi William Gibson. Have you listened to Lincoln and the Bardo? L yes, Marco and I talked about that. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. my favorite book of all time. Hi highly recommend it, especially the Audible version of it. As as Marco listened with your boys, your mm -hmm. 12-year-olds, and they loved it. Yeah. Cl wonderful book. Here's the complete. This is the complete George Smiley radio dramas from the BBC. Yeah. Just fantastic stuff. So that's my audio entertainment. You might say, but Leo, where's your music? Well, I do have music, and, and it really, to be fair, I should probably mention all the music apps, including Apple Music and my Sonos app and my Google Play Music and Pandora and everything. What's that yellow one? This one down here? No, the, the, the yellow Genius? One. Yeah. Rap Genius. Oh, so That's you can for tell the lyrics. what Kendrick Lamar is saying. Can I ever remember what those saying. guys are saying? I'm not good with lyrics. <laughs> uh, this is something, though, that you may not know about. It's called Vox, V-O-X. Oh. It's an alternative player for Apple's Macintosh and iOS, it if you pay for the Loop library, it does the same thing as Apple's Music Match. You can upload all your songs to it. Actually, it doesn't really do the, ma the matching. It's just a database. So my entire library of, of downloaded music is on here, and I can listen. Um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very nice, very capable player. But I also, uh, you know, have all my songs on here. So I find this to be... Um, uh, a, a really nice app. It is called. It is an unusual app. If you're if you don't, if you're not crazy about iTunes, I think probably this should be in here. At least you should take a look at Vox. And I think there's a free trial on the desktop anyway. Not obviously on iOS. But once you've got it on the desktop, you want it on iOS as well. And now my music library is everywhere. You see, though, it's not fair for me to say that's one. That's one of ten. But there's many. I use a lot of music apps. Similarly, I didn't. Until I, I didn't include any nav apps in here. Yeah, I just have maps. I use them all. I, mm. Google Maps as much as Apple Maps, but I didn't include that in here. <clears throat> my last is, of course, Google Photos. And you can see it's sitting right next to my Apple Photos. But I always put Google Photos on every device because of the backup. Uh, I just, it's one more place to store my photos. They have free unlimited backup of your, of your, um, uh, all your photos. And when I take a photo, it'll automatically be uploaded to Google Photos and be available on all my devices. So I, it's, I don't, maybe don't refer to it, don't open it a lot maybe, but every, I know every picture I've ever taken since 1999 is in there. I have 60,000, 70,000 images in there. They're all in there. They're categorized. I can search so I don't have to you know, do a lot of foldering and stuff like that. Uh, and most important to me, when I take a picture on any of my phones, and I use a lot of different phones, uh, including the iPhone, it'll immediately upload there and it's backed up.